wow, how right are at you? two. I'm good, how are you? Good, let me put my volume up here. Okay. Oh my god, what a journey we've we we've been on with you uh and uh Dimitri for the past three seasons. Um, we have so much to talk about. So first okay. of all, uh, can you tell me um, how, uh, the auditioning process? How did you find out that you got the role? Let's start there. So my auditioning process was very abnormal as far as series go. Like I had to audition for Nickelodeon stuff and like they have you audition for five times, something like that. But when it came down to my character, they were really down to the wire. Like they were about to film that weekend. So I go in, I do the cafeteria scene. I'm like, oh yeah, all the time, you know? I, I say that <laughs> and, uh, and then that weekend, they're just like, hey, we want you to fly out to Georgia. We, uh, we're gonna film this. And it's like, oh, okay. That was like literally the first time I'd ever gone outside of LA. So oh. when we first meet Dimitri in season one, his role was much smaller, and mm. as time went on, it grew, and we have really seen you flourish. Can you kind of talk about the evolution of Dimitri from um, season one all the way to season three? Yeah, so Dimitri has kind of had like a crazy story arc. Like you said, during season one, I was just uh, recurring, so I would like fly back and forth occasionally. And uh, later on in season <laughs> two and now three, I'm like a series regular. But his story arc, I would say, would probably be one of the more slow ones like from season one he's very much you know i keep to myself i play the long game you know if i get a good job i'll eventually become rich and get a, a hot girl but <laughs> now he's starting to see that you know maybe i don't have to necessarily play the long game he's starting to find confidence in himself it took getting rejected by karate to do it he's starting to see that you know I can I can hang I can hang with the rest. So it's just been kind of fun to get to evolve with the character, really. Well, but let's let's not stray too far from the ladies because uh, he's uh, he's fun to squeeze this season. Talk to <clears throat> me about being able to explore, uh, you know, being with the cool girl. That was very interesting because if you look back, on the first episode we're like well, the second episode, we're in the cafeteria, right? And we're looking across from the uh, tables to the other popular girls. And we actually kind of all section off with each other. You know, we, we partner up. And so it's kind of cool to see now in season three, Dimitri kind of gets his dream girl, you know? Um, and as far as like the makeup, But luckily, Annalisa, who plays Yasmin, was just absolutely amazing. So it, it went smoothly. But um, yeah, on a set in front of cameras is not the most romantic uh, setup. It's not a very romantic place. <laughs> <laughs> but is, is that uh, a storyline that you hope you can continue to dive into uh, next season? Oh, definitely. I think, uh, I don't know what's going to happen for season four. But I think that that's definitely going to kind of develop more right now. You know, Yasmin, she's kind of denying it. But you can't deny it. Dimitri's a stud, right? You know, he's, he's got those amazing <laughs> yeah. disproportionate limbs. What's not to love? So, yeah, I think, I honestly think that they could be like the next Kim Kardashian and Kanye ultimate power couple. Because with her popularity and his brains, they, they could rule the school. You know, I, I could see that happening. Yeah. I'm not sure if you've heard, like Kim and Kanye are on their way to divorce court, so you might want to pick some other heroes. <laughs> well, then I guess Dimitri and Yasmin are going to be a power couple sooner. No. Okay. Well, it is high school, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, now... A relationship that I am worried about is between Hawk and Dimitri because these guys went from being best friends mm. to being in this absolute weird place to Dimitri getting his arm broken. Um, and then yeah. towards the end, Hawk deemed himself. So where do we go from I, here? Yeah, so 
it's it's very complicated because yeah like you said we were best friends we always hung out together went off on his own dimitri tried hold, holding on to the uh the old eli but in the process you know he kind of got his arm broken kind of almost got beaten up at a mall so even though they kind of reconnected in the final fight there's still like a lot of i guess healing that has to be done like yeah he's trying to make amends but it doesn't just go away like that, especially with like the broken arm. It's like, that's as bad as it had ever gotten. Like he's. Tr so cocky, but he doesn't deserve that. So. But Dimitri does have a good heart. So I feel like if, yeah. if, 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 you know, if Hawk, you know, really works for it that you know we can end up in a good place especially since you yeah. guys have to partner up now and head to all valley to go against crease so yeah yeah there's got to be some kind of ground i definitely think that like they're going to be able to make amends with it because you know dimitri he loved that relationship with eli that was his best friend you don't want to just lose your best friend just like that so of course they're gonna it's gonna be a little tricky at times but they're they're gonna make up i that's what i think at least i have no idea what's gonna happen for season four but that's my speculation. I spoke, I spoke to Jacob last week and he was, mm. you know, he was just that Hawk was going to be working really hard in order to mend that friendship. And you could even mm. see, though, like, even when he was on, you know, the bad side, you know, you could still see that he was torn about doing the things that he wanted yeah. to do when he's kind of on this journey of self-discovery, too. But that's still, like, shitty what uh, the way that yeah. he treated Dimitri. Um, yeah. Hopefully he's going to be doing big things to make those kinds of amends. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so let's talk about this finale that as an OG Cobra Kai, uh, sorry, Karate Kid fan, I bawled because my 42 year old self would have never imagined Johnny and Daniel teaming up. Like when the Phil Collins song plays, you know, yeah. I was like, ah, oh, <laughs> bawling. So can we talk yeah. about that, that ending and what was it shooting that reunion? It was very interesting. Like, I would say that I haven't filmed with Jacob or, uh, like, Johnny Lawrence in, like, since season one, really. Because, like, I, I... South, like we said, and Johnny, he flipped me. Um, so, first of all, it was just kind of cool to be able to work with them all again. But, like, more so, it's just really cool to see the story are kind of, like, evolve to now they're kind of starting to work together. Like we would see hints of that. Like they could be pretty good friends, Johnny and Daniel. You know, they, they bob to music, stuff like that. But now seeing them like come full circle, they're actually like working together and have like a it's pretty so I look forward to seeing what kind of stuff that kind of turns into because kind of like, you know, Hawk and Dimitri, there's going to be some buttings of heads, but um I think they'll make a great dojo. There was this awesome scene where we had D. Snyder in the house, uh -huh. uh, and we only see we only see uh, Sholo and Billy in that scene. But I heard that they were playing all these songs. Were you present, like somewhere on set, and you could see this concert? Unfortunately, I filmed season three like a year and a half ago, and I was still seventeen at the time, so I had to like kind of do my three hours of school. So I unfortunately couldn't make it at that time, uh, but I'm a huge rock and roll fan. <laughs> I listen to, you know, ACDC, Twisted Sister, uh, more so White Stripes, stuff like that. So yep. I'm huge in the rock. What? How could I you know, miss I it? Oh, you're, I couldn't your, go. Your, your thingy keeps freezing. Yeah, no, the set teachers Oh, you teachers couldn't are, go. That sucks. Yeah, the set teachers are, are very particular about finishing schoolwork. So I had math at that time. <laughs> if yeah. we needed one more reason to hate Because, yeah. I mean, that was like a private show. And, and Sholo yeah. was telling us that he sang the songs. And, I mean, obviously, for due to timing, we only got to see a little portion of it. I guess, I guess a lot of us don't know about all these little intricacies that happen behind the scenes. So, you know, you guys have school and stuff like that, so you have to miss out on some stuff. But what are some yeah. of the cool experiences you've had throughout the three years you've been on the show? Honestly, I would say the coolest experiences is watching how they, like, 
film the fight scenes because in season two and season three, we have those continuous shots where it's like, it never breaks. And you just watch the whole fight scene just play out with, you know, stunt people jumping in and out uh, like during the whole thing. And eventually I want to be able to make kind of my own action movies, TV shows, stuff like that. So it's just, yeah, it's really cool to be able to see like how the professionals do that stuff. You know, some people, they, they pay to like learn this stuff, but I get to just kind of watch it for free and kind of ask questions. You know, John, Josh and Hayden, they're great about like answering any questions I, I have about filming and stuff like that. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool to be able to do if you want to be like a, a future film director. So yeah. That's so cool. Look, and your, yeah. sig your signal is now perfect. Yeah. Um, perfect. Okay. Um, so do you guys that are working on the karate stuff, do you learn karate on set for it? Or are you just learning like certain like choreographies? Yeah. So whenever we start like a new season, we have like, I want to say a solid week and a half of just training. They have a bungalow on set where we go, they have it converted into like this workout area. We have mats on the floor. We have weights, stuff like that. And uh, we actually have the stunt team, Hiro and Janelle, amazing stunt team, by the way. They like teach us everything that we need to know. And uh, at first it's just kind of like basic training, stuff like that, becoming more flexible. I have terrible hips. They, they don't bend. So uh, that's honestly my biggest hurdle at the beginning of each season. But as we get further and further into it, obviously we can't train as much because the stunt team that would be training us now has to work. So then at that point, we just kind of focus on more of the fight scenes that we're going to be doing, what comes up later on. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I used to take uh, Taekwondo when I was like eight. I think I get, got to a, like a yellow belt and then gave up. So it's kind of cool to be able to relearn this stuff. So was that able to, was your previous experience with it help you to pick this up faster? Oh, definitely. I, I also like study Krav Maga. Uh, it's like a Israeli fighting yeah. technique. Yeah. Uh, so I was able to use that a lot in the stuff that we do. It, it's very similar to like kind of kickboxing uh, and a lot of karate kicking techniques that we would do. So it definitely helped. I didn't feel as, you know, helpless. Like I need to go through another Daniel boot camp of, you know, wax on, wax off. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, now we have a great signal. I want to go back and talk a little bit about the arm breaking. Uh, okay. We talked a little bit about that with Jacob. Can you kind of give us insight into that scene? What was getting broken there? Like, did you have something mm -hmm. there in order to make the scene help? Like, what helped you? And what was it like to be uh, in that scene? It was very intense. That was the most intense scene that I had ever done for the show, definitely. Uh, there's been a lot of like people saying, did you actually break your arm? I did not actually break my arm. My arm's fine. It's, it's still in one piece mostly. Yeah, yeah, see, although I can bend them. They, they do bend backwards. So maybe that's a bad sign. But um, so preparing for that scene, it's not easy rehearsing a scene where you have to scream in agonizing pain without getting the cops called on you. Um, <laughs> So I actually had to go in my closet and just kind of rehearse the, uh, the scene right there. And uh, when I film something, I normally just kind of like to take a minute to get into it, especially if it's something as serious like that. So I really just kind of put all jokes aside, got, got in the place, tried to put myself in that place of terror. And Jacob, you know, he's absolutely amazing. Just a terrific actor. Uh, I don't think anyone could ever play Hawk better than him. But no, he just gave me a lot to work with. So yeah, it went down pretty smoothly. I think we did like two, three takes of that. And uh, as far as the arm break goes, they didn't really show anything. It's just kind of like holding my arm up. And then I guess a bend, just kind of like that. I guess I was just imagining like, just to be safe, that nothing happened to your arm, that maybe there was something keeping it straight. Yeah, yeah, no. I. Uh, I would not want to actually break my arm. It would look good for the scene, but <laughs> but no. Yeah, no, we just kind of like did holding my arm up and then bend it the way it's supposed to. So. Well, I think that the most painful part as a viewer is to know that, that at that moment, it's not just his arm. I feel like if it was just his arm breaking, it would be okay. But because mm. it's 
still his heartbreaking that like like mm. this best friend and and literally after even all the little bad things that happened along the way this was so like awful mm. yeah no there were a lot of like mixed emotions in there it was like the betrayal of my friend and then the betrayal of sam because like i'm watching her watch me get my arm broken because she's paralyzed with fear and then also you know just the agony of actually having my arm broken because you know that's as bad as it had ever gotten between you know eli and dimitri so it was, it was tough it's a hard I, film day i saw somebody in the question ask a question that i wondered what is the last name i have no idea uh, <laughs> uh, jacob and i joked that um you know his name is kind of italian right so maybe it's dimitri verespucci no italian. idea why you're italian uh sorry your name is very italian yeah, no, my so name the, is super yeah so my so name dimitri can be italian like you yeah my name is gianni vincent dicenzo my dad insisted on both of me and my brother having very italian names so here i am um but yeah no we don't know his last name or even his parents really so i kind of like to just kind of make a background for myself kind of thinking about what my home life would be uh just kind of speculation there i, I kind of like to think that maybe he's like sorry share share oh okay okay um i kind of like to think that maybe he's got like a a single mom something like that because he he doesn't really have any parents get involved with any of the stuff that happens to him you know especially with his arm being broken you think something would happen there so i like to imagine that maybe his mom is just so busy working hard because she's a single mom that she doesn't really have time to do this and you know he i also imagine that he has to like take himself on the bus everywhere he goes because he just kind of always shows up wherever and think well he probably wouldn't have his mom just drop him off like that you know oh, is yeah. that we would like to explore in a future season where we got kind of get to see more about like we did with, like this season with Satori we learned more about mm. her life is that something you'd like to explore for Dimitri Oh definitely like yeah i have my theories about how he functions but i'd like to see the kind of parents that would raise someone like Dimitri, you know, the sarcastic, pessimistic kind of guy with, you know, weird limbs. So, yeah, it would be cool to kind of explore his home life. Somebody's asking for you to talk about moments where Hawk and Dimitri have teamed up to fight. Mm, okay. So like the uh the season 3 fight, like the mm -hmm. very final, okay. Yeah. That that was fun. because that was like one of the biggest fight scenes that I had got to do. Uh we did like a a previous scene in season three where it led up to the arm break. We had like this whole fight scene planned out, but unfortunately due to time we couldn't do it. But um being able to work with Jacob on like fight stuff is just awesome cuz like we just kind of go in and out. He does one move, I jump over him, we do this like close line. It was just really cool. And then we had that double kick to the one cobra kai that was fun uh that took me a couple of tries because like i said my my hips they do not bend the way i need them to yoga sometimes. you need yoga i know i need something i do the stretches i do you know uh the i don't know baby child pose stuff like that yeah you need That's... to do yoga that will really loosen up your hips they're specific yeah. hips but this is not a yoga class um i need one <laughs> It looks like some people are coming in a little bit late cuz they want they want to know about the kiss. They know the fighting is fun. They want to know if the kiss was fun. <laughs> okay. Like <laughs> I said, the kiss kissing making out on a set in front of everyone with cameras in your face and uh hot lights just raining down on you. Surprisingly, it's not the most romantic scenario. Um but that was my first on set kiss and you know i was a little bit nervous because i had never done something like that before but luckily you know anna lisa she's just an absolute professional so we're just like okay it's not it's not bad it's not weird we're just going to do this and um i think we ended up having to do like 20 takes of that uh and then i'm i'm a little ashamed to say this when we were just rehearsing it we thought that the cam was rolling So we were like we went at it and um they were like okay good on rehearsal let's film it and we're like that wasn't that wasn't real okay yeah 
And um, the, the final shot that they did was a little bit more PG because we had some takes where we were, like, really, like, going at it. Um, and I like to think of it from Dimitri's perspective. You know, he's probably never really had a girlfriend before. So he's just kind of like, okay, this is happening. This is not weird, you know? So, we have to assume yeah. that was his first kiss, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think that would be his first kiss. So he's just kind of there against the wall being like, this is cool. This is cool. I'm fine. You're doing great. Yeah. Even as unromantic as it is, it's still got to be better than a day where you're getting your arm broken, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. <laughs> That's probably a better day. Yeah, I'd rather make out than be on a dirty floor having my arm broken. <laughs> So can you talk about your personal wishes for season four? I know that you guys have not started shooting yet. Mm -hmm. For anyone that's asking in the messages and asking on the internet, nobody has any idea when the season four is going to premiere. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I knew as a fan. So trust, there's there's nobody knows. But yeah, could, too. <laughs> could we at least talk about your hopes as the actor, How like about the growth that you're looking forward to seeing it, uh, in Dimitri as he goes into another season? Mm -hmm. So obviously I have my hopes with, you know, Yasmin. I want to kind of build that relationship there. Maybe so she doesn't deny her love for me anymore. Uh, I also want to look into the home life of Dimitri. And then honestly, the biggest thing I want to see, I, I kind of want to see him compete in the All Valley. I want to see how he fares in that. You know, I think there's a, a chance he could win. You know, as long as you're standing between him and a trophy case, he's got a pretty good shot. So, yeah. I, the, that's kind of what he's coming in as the underdog yeah yeah he's got long limbs he can reach um he's, he can kind of perceive who's doing what when so he can kind of block better um but yeah no he's really growing as kind of a, a karate fighter so i want to see how he'd fare in the all valley who do you think would be like the toughest competitor for him honestly i would say robbie mm. like yeah, he, he switched sides. And it would be interesting to see them fight because they were on the same team. There there was never really any bad blood between them. But I think that if Kreese is kind of training Robbie, he could kind of go towards the dark side. You know, it's definitely possible. And then who knows? He could seriously mess up Dimitri if he's not careful. Marty Cove is so, like, scary as Kreese. Can you talk about uh, what... When you were working with him when, you know, Dimitri was uh, doing the Cobra Kai thing? Yeah. He, so he was there the entire time, uh, standing there like an absolute pro. Uh, even when the camera wasn't on him, he was just giving me so much to work with. Even though he didn't say a single thing, he was just standing there, arms crossed, staring at me. And I have to be there as Dimitri just walking around being like, you know, I don't want to take a flag football approach, da 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 da, da. You know, uh, I take a more hands-off approach to things. And um, especially when he kind of holds on to his tattoo and looks up at him, he just kind of gives this snarl at me, like he's really going to enjoy just breaking my nose. And that, that, was, that was genuinely terrifying. Like, he, he's, he can be intimidating when he wants to be. I love that the the friendship with um, Samantha, um, mm. the, the bond there was much bigger this season. Can you talk about working with Mary more? Yeah. So fun fact, I actually worked with her uh, previously on a show. Uh, it was a pilot called St. Francis. It had never aired. Uh, it didn't get picked up. But she actually played my older sister in that. So it was kind of cool. I didn't even realize when I first went on set, we didn't recognize each other. It was actually my mom. She was like, Mary? And it was like, oh, whoa. So I've had, you know, the pleasure to work with her in the past. She's great. Um, but yeah, it's just really fun to be able to work with her. And, uh, you know, Tanner, although I'm probably not going to be working with him as much because now he's on the other side. Um, but yeah, she's an absolute pro. She just gives me a lot to work with. And it, it was weird because, like I said, she played my sister in the other thing. But one time during season one, she brushes up against my shoulder and I actually sniff it, you know, like Dimitri would. So, yeah, yeah. If you didn't see that, go back, look at it. Yeah. He had a, a line that was taken out. He was going to be like, oh, I know what I'm doing tonight. It was just, yeah, yeah. So it went from her being my sister to that. So... 
That was interesting. Uh, yeah, that was very interesting. But mm -hmm. oh, yeah, somebody's mentioning Aisha. I, I, we totally mm -hmm. missed Aisha on the show. Would you love? What did you miss her having her on the show? Would you love to see her back in the future? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, the great thing about this show is like people come and go. You know, we saw Kyler and Yasmin. They weren't on season two, so there's always room for people to kind of come and go. So there's definitely a possibility. Although I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, no offense, but I love the girls that are doing the karate. And she was just so badass that, you know. And I'm taking, they're, they're better than me at it. So, no, we, I understand. I, but, you know, I, like, I love, you know, pushing for for the oh. ladies. And, I mean, yeah. the rivalry between Samantha and Tori is, is, is coming center stage. So, I don't know. As much as we're focusing on Robbie and Miguel, I'm like, oh, we're kind of shifting over here. Like, the yeah. next karate kid. Which is, yeah, the, which is the movie that comes after the third movie, so. Ah, oh, oh, okay, okay, I see. You're really looking far into the future, okay. Oh, honey, we expect this at work like like a science project. <laughs> I'm like, this is okay, same. Oh, look, Jesse Cove is on. I interviewed him. Oh. Uh, Dad, hi, Jesse. Hey, Jesse, hi. He was so good in those, uh, in those flashback scenes, huh? He was amazing. I wouldn't want to mess with him. Huh? I, I no, I would not want to mess with him. No. <laughs> oh my God! I had no idea that that was his son until they hit me up. Oh, Jesse! Hi, hello, welcome, welcome to the live. Um. Okay. Are you excited to not have to do school on set anymore? I'm so excited to not have to do school. I celebrated on my 18th birthday. I turned 18 halfway through uh, the third season, and so I didn't have to like, when you, okay, when you have school on set, when you're not filming, you're doing schoolwork. And when you're not doing schoolwork, you're filming. So I, you know, have to miss out on stuff like the D Snyder uh, thing, I had to miss out on that. So now I kind of just get to, you know, be free. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Uh, also, I'm bad at school, so I'm happy to be graduated too. <laughs> Did you graduate? I I, yeah, I barely passed. Congratulations. Hey, Barry yeah. is still passing, right? There, yeah, there's a reason why I'm an actor. I say words good. That's it. So, Did you know that you always wanted to be an actor? Like, um, have you always been acting? So, yeah, I started acting when I was about eight years old. My parents were actually actors uh, way back when. They actually met in an acting class. And then my dad got on one knee and proposed in that same acting class during, like, a warm-up exercise. So acting is very much in my blood. Uh, and yeah, so when I was just eight years old, I just kind of walked up to them and said, hey, when am I going to be on TV? And so that day, my mom, she you know, dresses me up in a nice little shirt, takes some pictures in my backyard. We send it places and uh, the rest is history. I do like uh, a couple of short films about every car commercial you can name. Um, I did an Alexa commercial that got memed the hell out of for a while. Uh, it so did. That was fun. What? I have to look that up. I didn't know you were in an Amazon. Yeah. I think it was like the first Amazon Alexa commercial. So, yeah, look that up. I have like doff hair, something like that. Well, but now that, uh, well, I know, I'm assuming soon you guys will begin working. Do you have anything mm -hmm. else have coming up this year? Um, this year, I've just kind of been uh, practicing. I've been taking acting classes. Things have been really slow due to COVID, you know, but things are starting to pick up more. Uh, the biggest thing I'm kind of hoping to do is some voiceover work. Like I had done a little bit like a commercial here and there, but I kind of want to explore that avenue too. And, you know, just kind of look at different stuff I can play. So, That's yeah. so cool. Well, thank Gianna, you. thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Yeah, um, of course. Thank you for having here's, me. Four, here's one more really quick question that I think is oh. important. What advice would you give to someone who wants to be an actor? And by the yeah. way, you rocked your performance on Cobra Kai. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I would say the biggest advice I would give is just like, give it time. It really takes time. I've been doing this since I was eight. I'm 19 now. Uh, yeah, it just really takes a while. There was a, a period where my height, I'm like six foot tall. My height uh, out, it went past my age. They normally kind of look for older people to play younger, but I was like six feet tall and I was like 16, 17. 
So it was, there was a very long dry spell there. So it really does just take time. It's not an overnight thing. Also, practice. You can never learn too much in this class. Oh, what? Jacob Bertrand is here. He says, I will break your arm. <laughs> Hi, I Jacob. thought we were past that. I thought we were past that, Jacob. You see, you can't trust him. Oh, Peyton List is here, too. All of, see, everyone who was with me last I have the week. entire cast. You, hey, everyone. That's so cool. Hey, yeah, so cool. I was on last week. We were doing COVID okay. last week, and then we, um, we continued it this week because it's, it's just been so much fun. Yeah, no, I saw, I saw your interviews. They're really fun. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, had to, we had to reschedule, too, because of the Capitol riots out of respect. Oh, yeah. But it also gave us the opportunity this week to um, bring more people on because a week is too short for Cobra Kai, love. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. Thank okay. You. Well, I don't want to take up more of your time. I feel uh, since our signal was so good, I stayed on for an extra 10 minutes. But okay. if anyone wants to get another quick question in really quick before we go, maybe Jacob has an embarrassing story to say about you. In the Okay. Well, now let's not go crazy. Maybe we should go. You know, I or, have a lot of stuff hey, I have to do. Like maybe somebody has an, I know that Jacob is a prankster, him and Sholo. Come on, guys. Be cool. Um. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Everybody's just saying that they love you. Oh, thank you so much, guys. I love you all, too. We wouldn't have a show without you guys. But, but I mean, just you, you've just really blossomed across these three seasons, and we're just super excited to see what's to come in season four. And like yeah, you said, you. maybe you'll be the underdog, and we'll see you at the top. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I really love the growth that Dimitri kind of had. You know, his arc is, I'm really happy with it. All right, honey. Thank you so much again for your time. We'll be looking out for you. Send us some teasers when you start working on set because everybody's thirsty for season four. Okay. Jacob told me to take off my shirt. This is not that kind of live. Um, oh, are you going to show us your muscles? <laughs> oh, you want to see muscles? Uh, talk to me in six months. Okay, will do. But okay. I actually want to see you face Tori. Oh, I never even thought about that. Oh, no. Yeah, no. She kicked my ass. Hello, okay. Did it make it to the bathroom? Hmm? No, that's Jacob. Oh. Jacob, don't don't project your, your <laughs> experiences onto me. That's not cool. Uh, Peyton and Jesse and Jacob, thank you for stopping by. And, yeah. Uh, Cobra Kai first three seasons are available to stream right now at Netflix. And season four, we have no idea, again, when that's coming out. Yeah, sorry, you might have to wait a little bit. You think 2021 or more? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I can't say anything. I have no idea. But, you know, watch out for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's all I can say. We won't get you in trouble. But it's just, I yeah. feel like all over Google, everywhere, it's when is season four? And I get it. After I finished season three, I was ready for four. So Yeah, the second, the second season three dropped, everyone was like, okay, when's season four? I'm like, ah. Well, and I watched, watched season three, and I watched yeah. it on four because of um, uh, because you know we have to review for you know uh, our research for like stories and stuff, and so I couldn't even talk about it. So it's tough, but yeah, we're really excited for All Valley to see where everything goes. Yeah, me too. Are you using hash? Cool. Everybody's being what? funny. They're hash. using hash browns. I don't know. Um, send it to the internet. Nerf, oh, because he said something about a Nerf war. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, before we go, we got to hear about a Nerf war. Oh, yeah. So, um, Jacob and Cholo last season, they were rooming together. Um, I go over to their house. We, we got like two Nerf guns, and the entire time they were aiming for my eyes. So, that was fun. At one point, I held a watermelon hostage, uh, and I demanded to speak to my wife and to have a helicopter to get me out of there. Um, we go hard. It gets intense. So, yeah. And then we also do Magic the Gathering, and they may or may not kick my ass in that. So, Wait, were you the one who stole Jacob's rice cooker from the store? <clears throat> I don't want to talk about it. I can't comment on that. All I can say Jake, is... It I think rice. I found your rice cooker. The villain who stole the rice cooker. Don't say that. He still has the Nerf gun. <laughs> He's going to use it on me. Oh, no. 
I do. You can come over and have some rice. It's a three hundred dollar rice cooker. I know it's really nice. And he left it at the store. I don't know if you know about that story. Oh no, I I heard. <laughs> what a noob. So um, I always ask the previous person uh, for a question to ask for the upcoming person. And uh, on Wednesday we have Courtney hanging. Okay. Amanda LaRusso, I imagine you probably don't have a lot of scenes with her, but uh, I have like two. I, so what 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 should I ask her about? Um, how's that slapping arm doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good question. She's our hero. She, she did. Okay, for couldn't. Okay, yeah. Because I, I literally will keep you all day, and then your publicist is gonna yell at me. But <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again. Yeah. Uh, yeah take, thank you so much for having me. There. And hey, check in with us again for season four. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'd love to chat with you. More Dimitri. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining. Right. See Bye. you. Okay. <laughs>